What is up guys and welcome back to another raid challenge video with me the real deal So today we've got a team comp that's going to help you beat stage 15 iron twins on magic and void affinity um, It's a hundred percent win rate, which is exactly what you want We're going to get all those soul coins and soul essences and start awakening our champions and just become OP as fudge um, Yeah, so can't wait for that um, One thing I do want to say though is that I do feel that Void is probably the hardest out of all the affinities. Um, the reason for that is it's sort of like a level playing field where if you go against magic, you can use force champions. If you go against force, you can use spirit champions. And you can really sort of tip the scales in your favor to get that W uh, by using affinity as an advantage. And where with Void, obviously, you can't do that. So, yeah, I do feel that Void is the hardest, but obviously, everyone's account's different. So, everyone's going to have their own struggles. Uh, next thing, I do want to do a big shout out. To my lord, my, uh, my captain, my clan leader, Kodo or Kodo Kushi. Um, this is the team comp that he came up with. And it was also the gear that he was using and the stats as well. Um, it's quite funny though. He was just like, oh yeah, Iron Twins, it's so easy. First of all, it's not. It's very, very hard. Um, but the second thing is, um, he was like, oh yeah, they're all just in trash gear. And um, I think there was just a lot of things that he stumbled across. I don't think even he realised that he'd done. Um, so the first thing was that he put a um, few of his sport, uh, support champions in stalwart gear. Um, so this boss just does loads of AoE damage. Everything he does is just AoE, AoE, AoE. And stalwart reduces AoE damage by 30%, which is just massive. So this gives us huge survivability and just makes the boss a walk in the park. Uh, second thing is, um, it was a mistake that I was making and I think a lot of other people were doing because of the Polarium promo video for this boss. And they're talking about ironclad stacks. And basically, I think everyone's going for like 600, 700 resistance. And resistance is not the key to beating this boss. Turns out it's actually defense. Um, so you really want to focus on um, defense over resistance. So um, for your Nuka or Geomancer, you want around 3k to 3.3k defense. Uh, for your support champions, you want around 3.3k defense pushing up to 4k and that will give you such survivability that will just make it so much easier and give you that chance of getting that win. Um, yeah, so that is pretty much it. So yeah, big shout out to Kodo once again. You're an absolute legend uh, for coming up for this team comp and let's, uh, let's watch the video and go for the run. So this is the team. We've got Geomancer, Demitha, Mithrala, Godseeker and Brogni. So Brogni, absolutely insane champion. Um, I use him in so much content. He's great for arena defense, offense, uh, Doom Tower bosses, Hydra, uh, Clan boss, and Iron Twins. So if you get him, he's an instant six star old school fusion champion that is just 100% worth. Um, so what does he bring to the table? He has big fat shields that can't be removed. Um, he also does block debuffs as well. Um, so basically this boss does um, decrease attack and drop defense and he'll just stop that straight out with his block debuffs. Um, he also reflects damage to the boss if anyone's under a shield as well so he can help chip away at the boss as well which is just brilliant. Uh, then we've got Godseeker who extends debuffs so she's going to extend, sorry, extends buffs. So she's going to extend our block debuffs from Brogni, she's going to extend any shields. She'll extend strengthen as well which is just great. Um, she also does a whole bunch of healing as well. Um, and she's got two revives. So basically if someone drops, she'll put um, revive on death on them. Then they'll quickly pop back up and they can go again. She also has a second revive that also reduces uh, cooldowns on your champion's skills. So say Geomancer dies, she'll bring him back to life. And then his HP burn, will she'll reduce the cooldown of that. And then he can start throwing that out again. So get his HP burn out and start reflecting that damage to the boss, which is just absolutely insane. Then we've got Mithrala, who everyone will eventually get from Hydra. Um, she is just a sick, sick champion. Um, so she is throwing out Hex, which increases the damage we do to the boss. She also does poisons as well, which helps chip away. Um, but the main reason she's in here is for uh, accuracy aura. So you need a lot. A lot of accuracy for this boss and she just helps you um, achieve that with her aura um, she also has a strengthen and cleanse and shields so strengthens really good for this boss it really helps reduce the damage that he's doing to us and it, once again all about that survivability um, next up Demitha 
She also extends buffs as well. Um, she is also an insane healer. So she is just healing through the roof on this boss. And um, she also has block damage as well, which means that, you know, it's going to reduce, well, also give us that chance of surviving as well and reducing damage the boss does to us. Then we've got Geomancer, who I think everyone is pretty much using for this boss. Um, basically how he works, oh, he throws bitch. out a HP burn. Um, he throws out a HP burn, and then when he's got HP burn on the boss, his passive um, reflects damage to the boss when we take when we take hits from the boss. So Geomancer, insane champion for this guy. Um, yeah, and as you can see, he's done 3.6 million damage. He is solo carrying uh, on this boss. You know, it's all in his shoulders and he's doing all the work. But yeah, Geomancer, solid, solid champion. Um, you know, to be fair, I think he's a hidden gem. I used to really underestimate him, but when you level him out, he is great for clan boss. He's great for Iron Twins, Hydra, um, Doom Tower bosses. You know, you can throw him in anywhere and his passive and his HP burn will carry you so hard, as you can see here. So then Brogni, he's also done a decent amount of damage at 776k. Uh, Mithrala's helping as well, uh, 402k uh, damage on her as well. Godseek and Demitha, just ignore their damage. That's not why they're here. They are keeping our team alive and they're doing other stuff as well. So it's not always about the numbers. Uh, but you can see the Mitha has just gone sick, sick mode. Uh, 2.3 million healing on her. And then Godseeker and Brogni have done about 300k healing each. So the Mitha has done about, about eight times as much healing as those guys. Um, but, you know, they are doing other stuff as well. So it's not all about that. But yeah, let's uh, check out their gear, stats, and mastery. First up, we've got everyone's favourite angry garden gnome. It's Geomancer. Uh, mine's in a triple perception, and you probably do need it to get those um, accuracy stats on him. So, mine has defence gloves, accuracy chest, HP booties, uh, defence ring, HP amulet, and then we've got an accuracy banner. I do want to point out, this is an awful banner. But it's the only six star banner that I have and you really need it to get that accuracy uh, on this guy. So stats, we've got 48k HP, 2.5k defense. As I said earlier, should be sort of 3k to 3.3k defense to have better survivability. Um, quite slow at 201 speed, but he needs to be slower than everyone else for this speed tuning. And then we've got 559 accuracy. You want 550 to 600 on Geo for this boss. And then we've got very typical masteries. Um, so lots of focus on accuracy. Um, cycle of magic to help reduce, um, you know, hopefully reduce that cooldown on his HP burn on his A3. And then master hex is essential to keep the HP burn up. And then everything on offense is just all about damage. And then life drinker for a bit of survivability. Um, yeah, so very, very standard masteries for Geomancer. Next up, we've got Godseeker number three. Um, so mine is in a Fortitude and Stalwart set. So as I said before, Stalwart is absolutely essential. It helps reduce that AoE damage that the boss is pumping out um, significantly by 30%. It's huge. Um, gloves, we've got uh, HP gloves. We've got defense chest, um, speed boots, uh, defense ring, Defense uh, amulet and then defense banner. Total stats we got 44k HP, 4.1k defense, 200 speed. Um, bit of crit rate is nice, 69 crit rate, but the rest of the stats really don't matter for this boss. Um, as you can see, I did try to get resistance before, but obviously I had to do a re gear. Um, so yeah, resistance not important for this, not for this build anyway. Uh, masteries. Um, so some of the important masteries are lay on hands, so that increases our healing. So any champions that are doing healing, you want lay on hands. Healing saver as well really comes in clutch, um, so that's really important. Then the other ones that are as well is rejuvenation, so that's going to increase healing and shields. So if you've got any champions doing shields, you must take that. Blast proof as well, so this is also reducing that AOE damage by five percent. Um, and that goes great with Stalwart. So yeah, really, really important to get those ones. And Delay Death is also really important. So basically that is going to reduce the damage over time that we receive from the boss. Um, one mistake that I did make um, is taking Unshakable. So if I were to redo my Masteries, I would take Timely Intervention instead. 
So basically that will boost our turn meter and that means we can basically start healing again but also cycle for our skills and get that revive back up again as well. So yeah, if I could redo the masteries, I'd take away Unshakeable and definitely do Timely Intervention. Next up, we got the Mytha, um, whose masteries aren't finished, but she doesn't need finished masteries. Basically, um, we've got all the essential essentials that we need for her to survive and basically do her job. Then we've got Stalwart and Immortal. Um, so defense gloves, uh, HP chest, and HP boots. Then we've got defense ring, defense chest, and defense banner. 68k HP, 4.2k defense, 207 speed. So you want her and uh, Godseeker to be slower than uh, Brogni for this build. Um, so that's why she's at 207. And then resistance and accuracy and crit rate, they do not matter at all. So Demitha, next up we've got Brogni, my favourite bro. Um, so he's in double immortal and speed set. We've got HP gloves, HP chest, uh, HP boots, defence ring, defence amulet, and then HP on the banner. And he's got big boy stats, 97k HP, 3.1k defence, uh, very slow at 210 speed. So he's slightly faster than Godseeker and Demitha for this uh, speed tuning. Uh, faster than Geomancer as well. And then the rest of the stats don't matter for this boss. Um, masteries. So we've just gone defense and offense. Um, I guess you can argue you could go support and go for healing and have bigger shields with him as well. Um, but offense is good as well. It's sort of, it's really difficult because both of them are really good uh, for Brogni. Um, offense is great though because you can do more damage to the boss and sort of get through him quicker but support's also great as well because you get loads of survivability so it's up to you really i think both would work fine and mithrala there's sort of two ways to build her you could either go stone skin for um pvp um but triple perception is great for pvp and um and pv as well so it's up to you um gloves We've got defense gloves, accuracy chest, HP on the boots. So this is a bad, bad ring. Um, I wish it was HP or defense, but it's the only reaction uh, ring that I've got. And I mean, it's terrible rolls as well. The rolls are awful as well. But sometimes, you know, that is just the way it is. Um, and just for arena, that's why I've got, a, she needs the accuracy piece to survive in my go second team. But uh, yeah, so unfortunately it is what it is. Um, we've got HP on the amulet and then we've got accuracy on the uh, banner. So 59k HP, 3.4k defense, 229 speed. And then we've got 225 resistance and 619 accuracy. So with that aura lead, she's got about a thousand uh, resistance, which is just insane. Um, you know, I could definitely bump her stats up more. I've not actually finished glyphing her out, so I could definitely push my accuracy and resistance up even further. Um, but yeah, that's part of from that is from her passive as well. So basically, her passive works that um, accuracy is converted into resistance. So yeah, mine does have about a thousand resistance. So uh, the Iron Twins are not going to be putting any Ironclad stack on this chick. That is for sure. Um, then Mastery's very very standard stuff. Um, I think this is pretty much how everyone builds her. So it's all about accuracy, getting more accuracy from Laura Steel as well. Eviwire is great for Arena, pushing back the enemy's turn meter. And Eguile is just absolutely essential. No, no two ways about it. Bit more resistance. Um, improved parry for Arena. So that's going to reduce uh, critical hits on us. Then we've got rejuvenation for healing on us. Um, blast proof, not great. Um, no, it is great, but obviously... Uh, I'd rather have improved parry because it's great for PvE and PvP. So that is the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you do have a team comp that absolutely smashes the Iron Twins, you know, please drop a comment below who you're using, what gear, what stats. You know, help your fellow raiders out, and we can all get that wonderful one key on this pain in the ass. 
Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Peace.